Good morning, afternoon, evening to you. It's your boy, your brother from another mother. Jimmy Tack! Every time I hit record, this has probably been the last two days. Today's Thursday. Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday. I've tried this maybe three or four times and right after the whole extravagant intro, I'm left staring at my phone. Don't know what to say. Nah, I don't need my glass. I mean, it's bright, but the sun is that way. And I put them on because the brother was getting blinded when I was facing that way. But yeah, I'd just be staring at my phone and I don't know what to say. You know, someone I love and care about deeply is going through a very dark time, to say the least. And... I'm it's like I'm stuck in the middle of, you know, the balance of knowing how to feel and knowing what to think. I'm more on the side of the teeter-totter, if you will or the scale of thought and reason that this person is where they are because it's where they should be right now in this season of their life. And, and, and a season is not what you would think of like a football season or think of it like winter, spring, summer, and fall. This person is in the winter where it's dark, it's cold, it's dreary, it's lonely. Because they spent so long relaxing on the beach during the summertime. They didn't do anything. And instead of preparing for a harvest in the fall, They wasted it, and now it's winter. They have nothing left to show for their time. Without getting too deep, um, I could not help but think about war robots. You got the Hellburner. For those of you who don't know, Hellburner is a is a uh, is a robot that its own special ability is that it basically can sprint in to enemy territory, which is really everywhere. It's not like you're going into a an enemy neighborhood that's static. But it goes into enemy territory wherever enemy bots are. And then after a certain amount of time, it detonates. I think it's that it emits almost like a mini nuclear bomb, basically. Within like a 75 meter radius or something like that. Once that detonation happens, does a lot of damage to the robots that are in its proximity. But the caveat, the 
catch 22 is that it hurts itself in the process. So let's say, let's say the bot has 100,000 health points or hit points or whatever. And if it loses 12.5%, you do the math. What, they're at 85,500 now? Not a lot, but just enough. So as time goes on, the let's say that the bot doesn't accrue any damage, it doesn't get shot, it does its due diligence, detonates, hides, regenerates its ability, runs into the fray, detonates, and hides. Little by little, 12.5% chops away, drifts away into nothing. So as time goes on that that bot is being able to do a lot of damage, assuming that it's not getting hit by other enemy weapons, it becomes less and less of a strong asset to the other team members. Because every time that it detonates, it depletes some of its energy or its health. Now imagine that that bot you're going into practice and you are, you only have one bot, one health burner. And you go into practice doing its detonations, detonations. And you're running around in a map, dead city, Yamatau, whatever and you practice a couple of times. Imagine that bot, whatever the health was when you practiced, goes towards the health that you first drop in. The, yeah, as soon as you drop in, that first health that is represented before the game starts is what it was when your little practice session ended. 85,000, yeah, yeah, 85,500, let's just say you start off with. Kind of makes me think of uh, someone with, you know, a lot of really bad, bad habits. And I think of bad versus good as, you know, kind of like, uh, if it's not good for me, it doesn't feel good, it isn't good for others, and it does not serve a greater good. And that happens to be applied to a habit, it's probably not a good habit. Like staying up all night drinking, doing drugs. Because no one knows about it. No one can smell it on you. No one can see your decline emotionally, psychologically in that moment. And the next day, Instead of 100,000 HP, you're at 85,500. Another night goes by, you don't even recharge, you don't repair yourself. You do it again, and again, and again. So the next battle that you're in, your teammates are expecting you to be 100%, 100% here, and 100% body, 100% drive, energy, but you're not, you're a shell of yourself because of all that you've been doing behind the scenes and behind closed doors in the, in the darkest of nights. No one can see it, no one can see it, but slowly by Slowly, day by day, slowly by little, little by little, day by day, incrementally become less and less and less. <laughs> the 
hell burner. It used to be like the bot to have, you know, all these, uh, these um, S clans. Everyone would drop into a hell burner first. And they would just destroy everything and everyone. And back then, the destruction of self was great. Right now, it's bleh. Because no one uses it. And if they do, they're a new cat. But it's almost as if like people realized, damn, you know what? This bot isn't what it used to be. And there's better options. So I'm going to stop using it. Kind of like someone who spent a season in winter and realizing that, damn, what got me into winter in the first place was X, Y, Z. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct that. I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to get help. I'm going to call a friend. I'm going to go to rehab. I'm going to start reading books. I'm going to stop going to those places. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to be the best version of myself that I can be because my teammates in my life depend on me. They may not know it, but they do. So I stop using the bot. They take those actions during the winter time, the nerfs. They realize, you know what? Mm -mm. Nope. I'm not going there. It's like a, an alcoholic that says, you know what? I'm an alcoholic. I'm not going to a bar. Hey, let's go to the bar and celebrate. Nah, bro. I'm good. I'm there with you in my heart. But I'm not going. Wait, wait. Why you ain't going? You a you a punk? You saying that I'm I'm a I'm a drunk because I'm no, nah, I'm not saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing. You do you, I do me. Roll, homie. I'm doing me. And I'm not going to a bar. Or let's go to the restaurant. Uh, no, nah, man. Mm -mm. Do they serve coffee? I, I hope. I mean, I think so. Then I'm not going. Truth be told, I don't go to bars. I, me personally, I don't go to bars, bars because I had a problem with drinking. And even to this day, if I'm at a restaurant, I like to get a, a coffee with two cream and two sugar. Regular coffee? Absolutely. Give me some caffeinations. Oh my gosh, it's it's eight o'clock at night. What? I said I'd rather be stand, staying up late sober than staying up late drunk. And everyone that that hears me say that, they know. And because these people that if I'm at a restaurant with someone, chances are it's because we got that rapport. And chances are, you know me, I've told them my story. And 100%. All right, cool. All right, so what did you all do today? That's what I want to hear. Tell me about you. I spent my time in winter. And it's a lonely, lonely place. But that goes back to what I was saying about I'm stuck on that scale of, of how to feel and what to think because I know what's best for this person. And I feel bad for this person. My wife says, um, what, what are you, what are you going to do? What do you say? So I don't know. I really don't. Whew. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Tried writing this person a letter yesterday. And it was almost like for the first time in years, I just stared at a cursor, hoping that cursor would just magically just translate all of the ADHD, all the freaking all the sounds in my head onto, onto the page and make it legible and, and 
reasonable and empathetic and, and wise, but it, nothing, nothing came out. And I say, this person is in the best place possible. It's because this person needs to stay in winter and feel winter for all that winter is instead of running from it. This person needs to feel the heaviness of the consequences, the heaviness of the burdens, the heaviness of the, of the, of the body's response to neglect and in, in the imagine relationships that this person has in, in their life, the relationship with their kids, the relationship with their friends, because they pushed all their friends away, this person, and pushed all their family members away. But everyone knows this is a hell burner. Every time they show up, they take a little bit of everyone away, even their teammates, even their family, even their friends. So you know damn well it's doing it to this person too. Because it's no longer in darkness. It's no longer in, in the late hours of night. It's in broad daylight. It's in public places. Those of you who have had drinking problems or drug drug problems, you probably know. It all started in the middle of the night, didn't it? Or maybe. Maybe it's opposite. It started in broad daylight with friends and family and stuff, and the next thing you know... You hear, I think you got a problem. And then you go get help. And then it continues. It stops in broad daylight because you don't want to worry people. You don't want people to to question you. What you don't want is to be held accountable. So you do it in the middle of the night because it's easier. No one knows. So yeah, this person probably should stay in winter just a little bit longer to listen, to be. Though my heart breaks for this person because I really do care about this person. I learned a lot from this person. I learned how to run from my problems. I learned that anger solves everything. Fighting solves everything. I'm talking about fist fighting solves everything. But that's not true. I'm a grown man. When I was a kid, that's a, that's, that was a truth. That was a universal truth, a universal understanding of how the world works. In order to be happy, you just got to keep avoiding your shadow. But where does it get us? gets us stuck in this perpetual winter alone with no one around that even wants to stick up for us, that would go to battle for us, that would stay close to us no matter what. Wanna know why? 
because we're a hell burner. Every day, we take a little bit of health, a little bit of health from ourselves while we chip away at everyone else around us. But it doesn't have to be that way. So I tell you all that because I know just from percentages and averages that there's a chance that you're going through something. Maybe you can relate to what I said in my my encrypted way. And whatever you got from it, I hope it works out. I hope in some weird way you find clarity in some of the things that I said or say. You don't have to be in winter. You don't. You should. If you're in winter, I'm not talking about like actually like physic like literally in the season of winter. But if you're in a dark time, it's a chance. It's a chance. A great opportunity to take out your yardstick and measure out your actions, your thought and or actions. Because the, the cause is somewhere back there. You did something. You said something. It's a series of, of choices that were made. You can trace it back to when it's not when the winter started. It was before then. It's like you can say, you know, when I drive, I don't even know how to describe it, but basically like, like how Tony Robbins says, every thought and or action is a cause set in motion. So whatever is happening right now is, is the direct result of choices and thoughts that happened prior. And they all build on each other. They all build on each other. It's, it's like a snowball effect. So be in that winter Trace your steps back when you started making certain decisions and how it led you to where you are and in some way, shape or form, sever that tie so that when you start making those, those same decisions or those, you experience the same thought patterns, change it, stop it, interrupt it, change course because I don't want you to be in winter again. I don't want you to be destructive, self-destructive, destructive on others and everything around you and self-destructive on self. Because the best thing that you can do for everyone that's in your life is to be the happiest, healthiest, strongest version of yourself. And I know it's a, a cliche. It's a, it's a meaningless phrase to so many people. But when you think about it, you're happy, you're healthy, and you're strong in every aspect of your life, what magic can you give to the people that you love and care about? Your community, the world, it's endless. The possibilities are endless. They really are. But it all starts with you. It starts with me in my life. Anyway, I looked at the time. I'm like, oh, man, it's 24 minutes. Ah, my apologies, y'all. My apologies. My sincere, sincere apologies. And I know that there's going to be a certain, there's going to probably be like 80% are going to click it. They're going to get to that fifth minute and they'll be like, damn, this shit's too long. <laughs> it's going to be like 10% that'll actually listen through all the way. And then maybe 
5% halfway and then uh, another 5% that'll be like three quarters of the way. But those of you who survived it this long, 25 minutes, holla at you, boy. <laughs> anyway, I love y'all. No matter where you are in the world, I hope, I really do. I hope you, your friends and your family are happy, healthy, and safe. That is it right there. This is it has been freaking painful, y'all. This has been painful. I think it's been all my mouth breathing in my mask. My wife's like, hey, uh, baby, you need to put on your mask. I'm like, okay. This is, a, this is a new one. Can you hear me? <laughs> I love y'all. Peace.